Hey everyone, it's Matt. It's all good. Hey everyone, it's Matt Krevin with Talk Shop. Excited to bring another segment to my industry insider interview series. Today, I'm happy to be joined by Tony Wiley. First of all, Tony, thanks a lot for joining me. And second of all, I always like to let my guests introduce themselves in terms of your role and the current company and kind of what you do day to day. Sure. I am Tony Wiley. I'm the president and managing director of Special Olympics for the North America region. I know it's a mouthful. Basically, I oversee the United States, Canada, and the Caribbean in regard to the programs with the, and the, the, with the for athletes of intellectual disabilities, Special Olympics. Excellent. And I'm not going to read your bio, but obviously it's worth noting, um, you know, you've been in this, your, this is your current role, but also for those just to kind of put some things into context where your insight, you're going to share some insight that you've also got almost, what is it, maybe over 25 plus years of experience uh, in the close NFL. Yeah, close to 30. Close to 30. I don't want to demote anyone here on this role. So. <laughs> But uh, anyways, just the kind of people we'll share, you know, not only with the Redskins, but uh, with the Houston Texans and I'm and the Rams, I believe. And maybe there was something else in there and with my crack Houston. research staff. Houston, I, I Houston, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, San Diego Chargers, Dallas Cowboys, original L.A. Rams, St. Louis Rams, Tennessee Oilers, Tennessee Titans, Houston Texans, and then the Redskins. And a and it's funny. Tree. Go ahead. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> right, exactly. No, and you know, you and I are literally talking and meeting for the first time live right now. But prior to me hitting the go button, uh, you know, our world shrank. People do know each other. The NFL is, you know, it's a large entity, but at the end of the day, uh, it's it's somewhat small. We were, you know, sharing that we know some people in common, which is uh, which is great. So, anyhow, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, obviously, Tony, you know, this platform in this interview is geared for college students. For those that are maybe on the front end of their career search, as you can think back to when you were doing that, how did you promote yourself? How did you brand yourself? You know, how did you realize the importance of face to face communication skills were really going to be pivotal? So that being kind of the T or the setup, when did you realize maybe it was something in high school, college or beyond? When did you realize and was there a flashpoint moment that the ability to communicate effectively face to face to anybody was an important skill? was very, very important. I think I learned um, early, really early on when I really set my goal to be a front office executive, Matt. I um, And this is why I really love to give back to students and give students time because a guy by the name of Bob Watson, he recently passed away in 1989. He was the only African-American general manager in all of sports. Hmm. And Matt, he called me, he called me as a student from spring training. I had to pick a I had to pick someone, my first job, I changed my major to journalism. And my first class, I had to pick someone I wanted to be like. So right off the bat, I'll tell students, hey, ask. And I called Bob Watson in his, in his office and the secretary told me he was in Kissimmee, Florida. So I was thinking there's no way he's gonna call me back. But lo and behold, three days later, I get a call from Kissimmee, Florida from Bob Watson, the general manager of my hometown, Houston Astros. And he didn't spend one hour on the phone. He didn't spend two hours on the phone. He spent three hours on the phone with me, basically basically breaking down the whole front office structure. I had I only knew what I saw between players and managers and coaches and whatnot. And he basically broke down all the different departments and how everything was, their roles and organization. And the last thing he said to me, Matt, was, if you want to do this, you can do it. So that's all I need to hear. It ignited a fire right right in the belly. And basically, I started writing goals down. I wanted to work in the front office. If that didn't work out, I was going to be a newspaper or television reporter. So I started doing all three. And I always tell students, internships do two things. They tell you what you want to do, and they tell you what you don't want to do. So after I interned with the Oilers and the Chargers, um, I knew this is what I wanted to do. It's just... And people, you just have to have the determination and don't take no. And quite frankly, this was before the internet. I sent out 400 resumes. And the thinking at the time was the more darts, the more darts you throw at your target, the better your odds of hitting it. I wanted to be able to look at myself in the mirror and say, I did everything I could to try and do this because I, at that time it was a really big goal, but I was, I was determined, but um, met a good, lot of people along the way. But networking is one letter away from not working. So I know that's a long, less long-winded first first answer, but that that's the truth. Well, first of all, no, it, long-winded is fine. This is this is you. <laughs> this isn't hey, this is your life. But that's good stuff. There's a couple things I want to pick up and and just kind of move right on. 
uh, with? Uh, number one, it was the meeting you had with Bob. Um, and then you just mentioned, hey, networking. And, and I love that cliche, of course, about not working. Um, this is pre-internet and I started my day pre-internet as well, sending you know resumes to the 49ers, for example, and following up with phone calls. But let's just get to the meeting with Bob, or maybe it was after that, which you said kind of ignited that fire in your belly, if I heard you correctly, the art of networking, if you will. Um, sure. Again, think of it through the lens of college students that maybe haven't sure. started the process. Sure. What, what kind of guidance would you typically give someone, whether it's the sports industry or any industry, in terms of how do you network effectively? What are some good keys? Sure. Matt, I'll, I'll, for students that are watching and listening right now, I would ask them to whatever college that they go to, how would they react if they get a phone call from someone that's a freshman in the year in high, of the high school with the high school that they went to? Just imagine getting a phone call from, say, you know, you're at University of Alabama and you went to Hoover High School in Birmingham. Say, for example, you get a phone call. Hey, I'm a freshman. I understand you're getting ready to graduate from Alabama. What can I do right now as my freshman year in high school to help prepare me to get to where you are? And I always ask them, will they, will they hang up the phone or would they help them? And 10 times out of 10, 100 times out of 100, they say they're going to help them. So that's my point. Pick someone you want to be like. Do You do an informational interview. Hey, listen, I'm thinking of doing this. I'm a student. I'm thinking of your field. Can you tell me what it takes? Give me, this, give me, the, give me the roadmap to get there. And then guess what? You start doing it. But you don't stop right there. You follow up with them. Based on your advice now, I'm doing this. Just want to let you know. Now I'm doing this because the way it works, Matt, I'll get a phone call. People in the people in hiring and decision making the positions, and you know this, they'll get a phone call. Hey, I have a position open, followed by the magical words. Who do you know? Yep. For those students, they their names need to be on the tip of their tongues. And the great thing is you can you can almost be a stalker. I mean, you can call these people. I mean, all it takes is one hit. Unlike baseball, you know, you need to get three out of 10. All you need to get one out of 10. All you need to get is the hardest thing is going to, listen, all the one out there watching, the hardest thing is getting your first job, especially if it's something you really enjoy, something you're really passionate about. You got to keep pushing until you knock that door down. And once you get in, what you know keeps you there. Who you know gets you through the door, but what you know keeps you there. So my, my advice is, Find information, find someone, pick, that's really picking a mentor, follow up with them, and that'll keep you focused. That'll keep your name on the, on the radar. Does that make sense? Absolutely to me. And I always guide, you know, whether it's group workshops that I deliver or the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I do, I said, look, it's one thing to guide someone how to create or acquire uh, connections, rather, but you've got to stay in touch with them. Not every day. But if someone gives you advice, like you said, let them know, hey, I've implemented it. Just thought of just a quick message. Thanks for that little tip. I've used it. Here's what happened. Just want to just want to let you know. Stay in touch. Nurture the relationship. Don't just acquire them. I always mention that. So, no, absolutely. And, and don't ask for the job right away. You don't need to no. find out. Oh, by the way, do you have it? No. Just get information. Because when, they'll find you. If, if if there's a position open or internship going on, guess what? They will They will reach out to you. So, I mean, that's, 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 that's the blueprint. There was a lot that I want to unpack in each of your answers, which is great because you're giving lots of insight, lots of info, which is awesome. Now it's on me to really coactively listen and make sure I'm remembering it. Um, but there's a few things um, that you kind of brought up. And, and one is I want to table them now so I don't forget to. But I want to come back to uh, persistence versus pest. I want to ask you about you know what your personal take is on that in today's age. But yeah. first, I want to go back to um, maybe... It was the Chargers. I'm not sure which one was your first opportunity. Again, pre-internet, which is a great tool and a resource if it's used correctly. What did you do that helped separate you or differentiate yourself um, when it was that time where you were just getting your foot in the door? Anything that you can recall that you can share? Yeah. Uh, I think as a college student, you kind of have to dress for the part you want. I mean, when I, once I really realized I wanted to be an executive in sports, Matt, I started dressing like one. I started wearing suits to class. I started. I got. I got one of those old school NFL briefcases. I don't know if you remember that, the pigskin. I, I got one of those. I got I one have. of those, and I, and I was taking those to class, and I was dressing for the part. So start dressing for the part that you want to be like. So when you get there, 
you're already there. It's natural. But but really what you have to do, you go 100 percent. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be young. Don't make the same mistakes, but you can't you can't deny effort. Go 100 percent. Go 100 percent. Again, if you pick something you're passionate about, passionate about, that's going to happen naturally. If something that you really, really love in your heart, you're going to go the extra mile. But when you go the extra mile, when you go above and beyond, that sets yourself apart. Just don't do the status quo. Be resourceful. Don't go out and try to do the head PR job. But I mean, basically, but be resourceful. Always stay busy. Always be a resource. Always be dependable. Always, always earn trust. That's where we're in, the trust business. Once you earn that trust and you're dependable, guess what? People will stand on the table to make a recommendation, to talk well about you. They will be, they will be your champions. They will be your the people that, that help promote you. So especially when you're young, the student, just be dependable. I absolutely love that. I've always used the adage, look, once you've earned someone's trust, everything in life is negotiable. I've always gone with that. I'm not saying that's exactly what you said, but I think it's a similar uh, similar thought process behind it, meaning the spirit behind it. Now let's move kind of forward to today's college student. Look, we I just mentioned, you know, there's you and I were breaking into the NFL ourselves, respectively. There was you know, we were just hard mailing U.S. mail copies, picking up the phone. Uh, that was the way that we that things were done. There were no other options. Now to today's student um, where they've got LinkedIn, if they're on it uh, or they've got email where they I don't want to say that people like to hide behind an email. What captures your attention if a college student today reaches out to you, whether it's over email, phone, U.S. letter? What is it that captures Tony Wiley's attention of a student trying to reach out for an informational meeting or other? Well, information, usually a lot, a lot, of, a lot of young you know, young people connect with me on LinkedIn or I might just get a call or they might be a, a friend of a friend. Um, you need just the desire, just the, the, the desire to get knowledge, to get information is, is fine for me. But once I get the resume, it's a couple of things. The reality is you, you rely on people you trust. You rely on, I mean, some one guy, the last person I hired, he worked for two of my protégés. So, Matt, I told him, I said, you work for two people that I that I really, really trust. So I have nothing to ask because the recommendation is coming from two people. Basically, I, that's all I need to know. So I'm saying what I'm saying is you have to, you have to, um, I look for people, I, I look for recommendations from people I trust, long-standing relationships, mm-hmm. or people people that are hungry. I mean, young people nowadays, they want to walk right in and end up being a vice president. You have to you have to earn your stripes. You have to you have to pay your dues. You have to, you know, some people have to, there's some things you have to do to move up the ladder, to, to move up the different rungs. So I like I, I, I like from people that are driven. I like people that are driven, people that work hard. People that take pride. I don't care if you're just doing clips. You'd be the best person to do clips ever. But take pride in your work and most of all, learn from mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Just don't make the same one twice. What if someone, Tony, reached out to you? It was over an email and this just as an example and said, look, Tony, I just want to break in. I'll do whatever it takes. Does that resonate with you? Or is that someone, is that too shotgun blast for you? And in that regard, is this too broad? What's your personal take on that? That's a little bit too. I mean, you don't have to say that. I mean, your actions will say that. If someone says that, I mean, yeah, that's that's a given. If, if you want to get in, damn straight, you're gonna do what it takes within reason, within your your you know, keep your integrity and dignity. However, your track record, your your method of of, of succession, your your uh, should show that. You know, hey, I, I I worked at a school paper. I worked in athletic department. I did this. I did that. So, you know, be resourceful. There's a difference between jobs and careers. I mean, a job pays the bills, but if you start doing something for your career, that's something that I'm really, really impressed with. You know, if you're in school and you, even though you had to work through school, but you spent your Saturdays, you know, working at the athletic department, passing out stats for the football games, something to keep you engaged, something that gets you, something that you can put on your resume, I'm all for. I'm all for. Is there anything, Tony, in your past uh, you can pick whichever NFL franchise or the current role um, where you are right now at the Special Olympics? Maybe someone has reached out to you in a way that um, maybe, like I said earlier, kind of caught your attention, but it was the way that they they packaged, they positioned, the way they promoted or branded themselves. A lot of students today realize, you know, they are their own brand. They don't realize it quite yet. 
and it's important to brand yourself, but they don't know how to do that yet. Um, any guidance tips yeah. that you would share as it relates to any one of those elements? Yeah, first of all, anyone nowadays, I mean, we're lucky in our age, we didn't have social media, but right. for young people right now in school, watch your social media. I mean, before we hire people, guess what? We go on their LinkedIn, we go on their Twitter and Facebook. We we look at and see what their profiles are like. And you don't want to, you might not want to think of, you might want to think about removing those party pictures with beer cans and, you know, little things like that. That's people that are going to employ you are going to be looking at those. So make, make sure you represent yourself the way you want to, number one. Two, um, when I was with the Titans, uh, there was a young lady that that she worked at ESPN and moved was moved was lived in from Birmingham, so which was like a couple hours away. And she's like, I learned. She said, I remember she said, I want to take you to lunch. So I went to lunch with her, and I kind of knew she was trying to want a job, and I had no interest in hiring her, none whatsoever. And I remember um, she put, she slid her resume to me, where she was the sports editor at the newspaper in school. She worked in Europe. She went to Alabama. She went to uh, work in the athletic department at University of Alabama, you know, big time football program and worked at ESPN as a producer. So as she was talking to me, she was saying, you know, it takes an act of Congress to get a, a day off where I'm working right now. And kind of and she was willing to start as an intern. She had a full time job, but she was willing to step back to be an intern just so she could move home and get experience. And man, I'll be honest. I looked at her resume. And I closed my eyes and I basically said, how can I say no to this person based on everything that she did? And on, on top of that, I, I covered up her name and I said, if this was a guy, would I have any reservations of hiring her? And I said, absolutely not to myself. I said, you know what? I can't deny this person. And I told her, I said, because I remember she said, I don't know who won the Super Bowl in 1976, but I do know. Um, I work hard. I do want this position. So I told her, I said, you got the internship. And it was the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> but I mean, right. don't give anyone an excuse to say no. Absolutely. Don't give anyone an excuse to say no. And 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 she's doing, doing wonderful right now. She's an anchor. She went, to, went on to do television, do different things. I'm really, really proud of her. 32 to 14 for those that are keeping scores, Super Bowl 11, 1936. <laughs> Just thought I would add that out there. Sorry, I'm a geek with the numbers on that stuff. That's the stuff that is retained. Now, let's see if I can serve my own memory as I just kind of threw out a goofy line there, but I did mention something and I want to come back to it. We're almost there, Tony. We're hitting the, we're rounding third. You're not, you're just being waved home at this point. But two quick questions I want to dance out there. And I mentioned it earlier on the front end, college students may not feel like they've got that stripe or feel like they've got the right to just reach out to begin with. And then if they do, they muster up that courage, which they should do, and just reach out. Then there's the fine line of, let's just say they haven't heard back. The borderline, I'm curious as to what your take is versus a, someone that's being persistent versus a pest. And the reason I bring that up, because it's real, it happens. People don't know how often they should follow up, what's too much. What's your personal take on that? My personal take is, hey, you have to be a pest sometimes. I mean, that's how you get in. Let me tell you something. When you're a student, you're not a pest. If you're a grown, if you're a grown man or something like that, or you know, way past that student age and things like that, that's when it becomes to be stalker. But right. case in point, I had a young lady. She she called me every, I guess it was every Monday at 10 a.m. I mean, every Monday, every Monday. Probably around the 20th time, I said, "Listen, okay, stop calling me. You can come in this Friday for an interview, and we'll we'll have you work the draft," which she did. She ended up being an intern for me. I ended up hiring her full time, and now she has a great job with, my, with Magic Johnson. So, I mean, in these types of positions, you 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 have to show people that you are willing to go above and beyond. And when you're a student trying to get your foot in the door, remember I keep saying, you remember I told you, keep knocking till you till you till you knock the wall down. So, I don't think there's a there's a, a definition of pest when you're trying to get your get your foot in the door. To Absolutely me, it shows not. you that you're, it, to me it shows you the term you're determined. And I mean, again, I told you earlier, don't take no. <laughs> right. Anything, um, just gut reaction to this question. Is there anything that someone has done uh, as they're maybe they've trying to network with you or they've had an informational interview or if it's a legit real interview, just leading up anywhere through that process, someone did something just creative, <clears throat> pardon me, and it kind of caught your eye. Anything? Uh, 
Oh, Anything along those lines, or maybe there's too many stories to share. No, I, don't I, know. Many. I mean, when I was in Houston, I, I have two offices, and one of them was downtown, like on the 28th floor. And I don't know how this person did it, but they ended up somehow got their resume on my window on the 28th floor. Someone taped, someone got, it was a window washer. They paid a window washer, whatever, but they knew where my office was and they put their resume right there in the window next to my desk. I thought that was pretty creative. Another time, someone sent me a uh, a shoe with a resume in the shoe and it said, I just want to get my foot in the door. Yeah. And, then, and then another time, someone sent lunch, me a, a box of pizza that was with, lunch, with pizza in it. Or I opened a box that had their resume. So I mean, I had to give them some kudos for that. That was that was pretty creative. But yeah, those people really get creative. But at the same time, people just you know email you and let you know. And it, like I said, your experience will and your desire and determination will help me determine how how bad you want it. Quick side note: Did either of those three examples get with you, connect with you, get a job? Just curious now. No, no, no. I thought that was a little bit too much. No, they, they didn't. They didn't have. No, we didn't. But I did, they did get a phone call from me, though. Uh, that's good. I appreciate you sharing. All right, last question. Um, I just want to end with this, Tony. Appreciate you taking the time and sharing some great nuggets that students can uh, really put into action if you all they do is listen. Uh, and it's this: Maybe it's uh, throughout any of the search process, whether it's on the front end or if someone's meeting with you face to face, is there an example or two that you can share where, you know, I guess the question is this, what inspires you when a college student is in front of you and they do blank? What is it, fill in the blank, that inspires you? People are wanting to follow their dreams. I mean, you can really, you can tell, again, the person, I won't say that's a pest, but you know if somebody really wants to do something really badly. And I'm not saying to sacrifice, I'm not talking something that really uh, give up their dignity or anything like that. But you know if someone is really passionate about something, that that's what you want because you know they care. You know they care. And if they care, they're going to take pride in what they do. If they take pride in what they do, they're going to be dependable. And if they have all three, guess what? You're going to trust them. So. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I really like that. I think, mean, especially when we work in sports, I mean, people I think it's a glamorous position. People really like to do it. So that separates the good from the great ones, to be honest. I mean, people that don't just do the status quo, you want to go above and beyond. Those are the people I like. I like the people that could bring something to the table, whether even if it's being creative, because I'm not the type that will say, hey, when we have our staff meetings, that's when you, you can bring something to the table. So, you know what? What do you thought, think about this? What do you think about that? You have to be creative. You have to be able to keep up with the times. At one point, I really didn't know anything about social media, but my staff taught me, the young folks mm -hmm. on the staff, hey, no, this is what we're doing. This is how you can. And I was one of those old school dinosaur guys, but I learned to embrace it during the time when I needed to. Tony, I appreciate you taking the time and sharing some great wisdom. Is uh, is there anything, maybe there's an initiative with, with the Special Olympics, any website, yeah. any blog, anything you'd like to promote, maybe want, uh, whatever yeah. you would like to do, Please plug away. Yes, go to specialolympics.org and volunteer. I'm telling you, uh, become a coach, volunteer your time, work one of the events. Once we get out there, do virtual training. It's going to really, really, you're going to get more out of it than you put in. Trust me on that. And it's very fulfilling and it's a great movement and a great cause. And the website is specialolympics.org. You probably already said it. Anyway, Tony Wiley, thanks again for taking the time, sharing some great knowledge, some insight. Uh, for those of you that like this video, hey, why not share it to others that you think could benefit from it as well? And again, Tony, we look forward to staying in touch. Matt, thanks. So say hey to Keon for me. You bet.